Welcome to Your Food Business Success. This podcast is for early stage entrepreneurs in the packaged food industry ready to finally turn that delicious idea into reality. I'm your host, Sari Kimball. I have guided hundreds of food brand founders to success as an industry expert and business coach, and it's got to be fun. In this podcast, I share with you mindset tools to become a true entrepreneur and run your business like a boss. Interviews with industry experts to help you understand the business you are actually in and food founder journeys so you can learn what worked and didn't work and not feel so alone in your own journey. Now let's jump in. All right, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited to welcome on our guest today. Uh, Our guest is Mark Josephson, and he is the founder and CEO of Cast Iron. Uh, Mark is a lifelong entrepreneur with a passion for helping small businesses thrive. He is a two-time successful CEO, having built, grown, and sold two previous startups, including link shortening company Bitly. That's cool. I use that all the time, (laughs) by the way. Thank you. Uh, Mark started Cast Iron to combine his passion for small businesses and eating cookies. I love it. He currently is spending lots of time doing both of these. So welcome, Mark. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, and we get to turn. I get to turn the tables on you because I was. Yes, I know. You interviewed me, and now. <laughs> Why I'm nervous this time, but not nervous then. Yeah, now it's your turn. So, um, I love that that you you know there's something really special about the startup mentality and and getting it, and I think it's so cool um, that you bring that into the food space. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about what the heck cast iron is? Because I bet a lot of people are like, what is that? <laughs> what yeah, so thank, thank you. And, I, and I'd love to talk. Uh, you made me start thinking about my dad who taught me how to be an entrepreneur. So maybe we'll come back to that in the therapy yeah. session um, component here. Um, cast, think of cast iron as the marketplace for independent artisans to match with customers looking to buy their products. And that's what we're really excited about to be um, launching now is we have built already an unbelievably powerful platform for independent food artisans to professionalize your business with gorgeous websites and customization and then tools to streamline and simplify your life in your business, like billing and CRM and pre-orders and calendars, all that stuff. And then the next thing that our customers have always asked us for is more customers and how to grow their business and build a sustainable, healthy life while doing this business. And so that's why we're excited about the marketplace and what we're launching now. Yeah. And we'll get into that big announcement here in just a second, but I want, I guess, can we go in a little bit deeper into um, how cast iron is different than, than maybe Shopify or who the user is that would be interested in using this platform? Sure. So we are laser focused as a company on independent, super small businesses uh, who are making food out of their homes or out of commercial kitchens. So cottage or uh, in a commissary or commercial kitchen. And that's important because these customers of ours have specific needs that are different than the needs of other customers. And every business I've ever been in and aspire to be in has a deep affection for an understanding of their customers' needs. So um, cast iron... Shopify is awesome, super powerful. It's yeah. a mile wide and an inch deep. Any business in the world can use Shopify. Um, you need a certain level of technical savvy and time and sort of gumption to get through. Well, it's not a particularly easy setup process. I've done it not well. Um, but what Cast Iron aims to be is a place where a home baker, a prepper, a hot sauce maker, a granola maker, somebody who's got a product that they're selling comes to and immediately feels like, oh, you built this for me. Mm. What are the five or 10 things that we can, we don't have to assume about our customer, but we know deeply about our customer. So we're asking about allergens in your kitchen and allergens and ingredients and um uh, modifiers like paleo or kosher or local or organic, you don't have to go looking for those when you're building your shops and products in cast iron. They're there because that makes sense. We know that you want to do pre-sales. 
Presales start on one day, they end on another day. It shouldn't be hard to do. It should be, you should feel welcomed as a user to the platform and understood as a user. And you know, we, we talk a lot about empathy for our customers to really understand. So somebody, you can be small, you can be big, you can be starting out, you can have an existing business, but you should feel like your life got easier when you got onto Cast Iron. Right. And because I think the people you're working with, which it's great that you work with, I mean, it sounds like you have other industries, but I know bakers are specifically yeah. a really important customer to Cast Iron because they have products that are perishable and that um, they can be customized a lot and um, they need a lot of flexibility around pre-orders, pickups, deliveries, right? all well, of that that's stuff. A, that's another thing we've actually seen a lot of um, when we have people come to us after being on Shopify is Shopify really is in most of the platforms are really optimized for like items on a shelf, yeah. like in a warehouse, like drop shipping behind the scenes on all that stuff, not for perishable, customizable and locally delivered products. Most of the products on cast iron are fulfilled within a one zip code radius. So it's local pickup or local delivery by the right. seller themselves, not putting in a, in a, in a DoorDash or task rabbit or whatever to like deliver it for you. It's like, it's in my car and I'm dropping it on your doorstep <laughs> kind of thing. Right. So it just requires different, um, different decisions when you're building the product. Yeah. And, you know, full disclosure, I love Shopify. That's what I usually recommend. Although now that I'm more aware of what you guys do and I've done some events for you and we're going to, we're doing more and it's going to be a really fun partnership. But, um, you know, there are times where I'm, especially when I'm working with bakers and cottage food or maybe like the meal delivery or, yep, no um, you know, things that are more perishable. It's like, no, 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 you don't need the full build out of Shopify. You need cast iron. And especially people who are not very tech savvy and, you know, we do some help support for, for Shopify, my team, but it's so nice that there's this option where somebody, right. I cottage food or like making in a commercial kitchen who's, they just, they make a great product. That's what they do. <laughs> so, you, do. you, don't, you know, make it you easy. Don't, you don't, you, it's really hard to be an incredible baker and an engi software engineer and a financial analyst, and an admin, and a marketer, right? Yeah. And a product designer, like, and a graphic designer, in addition to everything <laughs> else you're doing. And, you know, we talked a little bit about my background, but my whole career has been about how to use technology and software to make individual people more successful. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that to me is the power, uh, the power of, of technology and, and this innovation that we see and I'm old, I'm not on camera, but a lot of gray hair, like Zen.com one, when it was like, what is this going to be used for? Who's going to use it? Do you really need a computer in your home kind of thing? Right. And now we carry one in our pockets and it's just, we're all much more productive. It should be making us more productive. It should be making us happier. It should be making life easier. And that's what I love to do. Yeah. It should be working for us instead of yes. us becoming... <laughs> beholden to this thing that drives us crazy. So that's Sorry, so do great. You, do, you, do you keep your phone like in your bedroom or do you leave it outside? Um, I do have it in my bedroom. I, I have it very locked down. So like 8 p.m. It locks almost everything okay. down. Um, I do have a couple of like my sleep app is on and there's a couple okay. of things that I do need my phone for. But um yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't ask? broken up with, I haven't, I'm just, cause it's like, it should be working for us, but like, you know, you get up, I, I, my phone is by my bedside table. It's on my bedside table and I shouldn't have it there. Yeah. It's not healthy. I do. I, I use the feature, uh, in, in, for the iPhone anyway, you can set, like, you can decide what apps to lock down and when and time. And so I've done that and it's great. It's not that you can't get in there, but it re tells you like, you have to yeah, bypass terrible. it, right? right. <laughs> so yes, I am working on a better, healthier relationship with technology. <laughs> Good luck with Using that. Let me know how me. Yes. So speaking of all those hats, yeah, I love it that you've built something that's easy for people who aren't techie, who um, 
you know, that, that it works for them and especially these kind of businesses. Um, I'm so curious, why did you decide to go into food? Like besides to eat more cookies, of course, but. Well, I can't lie and pretend that that's not like part of it. I really have always been obsessed with cookies um, and with food. Uh, uh, let's just say I don't have the healthiest relationship with food. It's complex. <laughs> um, and this is probably another podcast episode, but um, so uh, I was running um, Bitly. Uh, I did that from 2013 to December of 2019. And uh, and when it, then it was time to go do something else. And it was, it was like, okay, great. I'm going to take a year off to be with my families, in quote, family, one family, in quotes. <laughs> and I thought I was going to be the only one home. And then the pandemic hit. Ah, and yes. so I was home with my family and <clears throat> doing a lot of things. Um, but one, do you remember there was like a week or two in there? when it was, the supply chain was particularly bad and right. all the news stories had the empty shelves. Yes. And, you know, you, you may have been like me and ordering crates of funky vegetables and frozen sides of beef to your house, like all those things. So we, we were doing that too. And we also, one of our youngest son has pretty severe food allergies. So just adding a layer of complexity to all of that. And I started searching and Googling like I do, like one does. And I happened upon people in my neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods who were making food out of their homes or commercial kitchens and selling them on Instagram or Facebook. And I was like, what is this? And I'd known that like, you know, we'd gotten like a candy table once or a charcuterie thing for a party or something, but I wasn't really paying attention. But this guy was making pints of artisanal ice cream in a commercial kitchen putting it on Instagram and drops and selling them out in like five minutes, like insane flavors for like 15 bucks a pint. What? Right. And then there's this woman who is a classically trained, <clears throat> excuse me, pastry chef, worked at all the finest, fanciest places in New York City for the events and the weddings and all that stuff, moved to the suburbs and was now delivering hot cinnamon rolls to your doorstep on Saturday morning. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. <laughs> Because we're all locked down and we're like, oh, we can't yes. go out to eat. <laughs> and I'm the my, the way my brain works is, you know, in living in New York City, like you walk by the hot dog guy and I start thinking to myself, OK, if each hot dog is 250 and maybe he sells 20 an hour or whatever it is, I'm like I'm doing the math to figure out, like, does he know something I don't? Should I be doing that? Like, you know, like how to like, how does it work? And I went down the rabbit hole and I I quite literally found in that first look thousands of these people since then no no exaggeration millions worldwide of people who are making food out of their, in, in this category broadly and I spent time with them mm -hmm. and I talked to them and I like what do you love about your job what do you hate about your job why did you start doing this job if you had one wish what could it be like real like product discovery but like genuine curiosity and this, there started to be some patterns in there. And the patterns are really telling. So take bakers, for example. These are usually really incredibly talented women um, in their 40s or older, um, not doing this for fun, per se, but doing this for extra income to either supplement an ex another job, to cover an incremental expense like health care or child care, or they had a family member move in with them or something that happened that they are yeah. um, uh, entrepreneurs by necessity and the multi-hyphenate. So I do this and that. And there's this trope of this being a side hustle and you should just give it away for free and people get annoyed if you try charge them. That's the fear in the mindset of a lot of, of these sellers. And they are so passionate, so talented, and so hardworking and working on all the wrong things. Yeah. 80% of the time doing something other than creating the moments of joy that can be delivered when you put something warm and fresh baked in front of somebody you care about. Right. And those, that 80% of the time was all things like, oh, I need a professional looking appearance. Oh, I wish I were sending emails out. What does my social media look like? Um, gosh, where's my customer list? I wish I had a place where I had all my customers. Like, is that order due today? Is that like just 
who paid me, who didn't. Like just nonsense that doesn't feel particularly effective. And I'm a software guy and a nerd. So I'm like, oh, that's not hard to build. Turns out it's hard to build, but like not hard to build. Um, <laughs> and it's hard to build a company, not hard to build software. Well, it's hard to build software. But um, and the the thing that was so interesting to me is I wasn't expecting to get really into and understanding the psychology and motivations of these entrepreneurs. And I, for whatever reason, I, I wasn't expecting to really learn how, first of all, there's the, do I even deserve to be doing this? Is my stuff good enough? Can I charge for it? What should I charge for it? Oh, they'll never pay for that much. That sort of confidence and inner, inner, um, mindset that you i'm sure help with and I'm saying, send them up you all need to come my way because that's yes. one of my specialties dealing with yes, the mindset right? so, of like yeah, you deserve it this is special and 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 you're talented but then the the amount of work you spend doing on things that are not you're not good at right and then you fail Fail meaning like you wake up one day and say either I can't do this anymore or you look at the numbers and say this makes no sense. And you they feel like they are failures as human beings, not as trying something entrepreneurial. And how intertwined those are and how happy I am when someone says, I could never do this without cast iron. Hmm. You made my life so much easier. Oh, now I can do this. Right. When really we're just getting out of letting them get all that stuff out of the way for them so they can step forward and be awesome at what they do. Yeah. And so that that I've been obsessed with that. And I've thought a lot about moments of joy. Like why food? Like why food? Like um that that's how <laughs> I I'm happened. in food too, right? <laughs> that's why I happened upon I told you like the origin story, but like what like what's better than I know it's a snowy day that my wife, I literally, she's making us cookies today and her cookies are my favorite cookies by far I've ever had. Are they like technically the best cookies in the world? Doesn't matter. Cause she's making them for me <laughs> with love. Like that's special. That's like, I mean, what's better than that? Like if we can figure out, sorry, how to get like thousands or millions of entrepreneurs to bring their love and passion and talent and hard work to products that deliver that to people. That's like, that's life's work to be proud of. Yeah. And just to so. make it easier to actually execute because yeah, there's so much to unpack there. And that's exactly the work that we do in master your business, but it's that entrepreneurial curse of I'm so passionate about my product, right? I'm the maker. And then Ooh, I have this lightning bolt moment of I should turn this into a business or maybe yeah. some of it's by necessity, right? It kind of mm -hmm. it can go both ways, but or a combination of both. But there's this entrepreneurial moment, but the gap of I make something delicious and running an actual business and like yeah. all the things that it takes to be a CEO and to be a business owner and you know financials and execution and marketing and sales and yeah. all of it is just a lot. And like you said, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, there's a reason why, what is it? 80% of, of startups are out of business within five years. Um, I think it's because of the gap there between passion and like how to actually run a business. Passion and a plan. Yeah. Right. And and so what I love, so you've you've taken Castern has really taken a lot of the the heavy lift. And that's what we talk about in Master Your Business all the time is like, who are your who's? Right. And first start with outsourcing. Start with products. You don't have to hire people all the time to solve it. You can work with technology. Yes. <laughs> things that are built specifically for your industry and that have you in mind. And I, I love that you've thought about all of these. You know, you really got into the mindset and the psychology of your customer and all of their pain points and then created a solution for it, right? That's, yeah, what, right. that's what we're all doing here <laughs> as business owners. So so that's your first level that you did was just the, the website platform and all the pieces that need to get built in to help people run a smoother business. 
And then, so let's talk about what's next because Cast Iron has uh, has made, we'll, we'll do it in the past tense because uh, this will be coming out after the big announcement, but you've made a big announcement and added a whole, another whole facet to the business. So tell whole us about that. Facet. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's um, It's so energizing. So we've launched the consumer marketplace for shoppers around the world to get access to these great products and great artisans um, to find more moments of joy. And that makes, um, it's, it's, it makes, it fills a need for people looking for special foods for special events and special reasons to buy. We've now seen millions and millions of dollars of transactions through cast iron in the, over the past couple of years. So it's undeniable that people love artisanal food um, for the right reasons and at the right times. And it helps us and continues on the path of our mission to support and empower the artisanal entrepreneur and give them consistency. In, aim, we aim to give them consistency of, of, of earnings, of growth to go from does this work to it does work and I can meet mm -hmm. my goals. Um, it lets them focus on being awesome at what they do and we can market and be a marketing engine. So we're launching a whole marketing engine behind the scene. It's not just the website at shopcastiron.com, but it is um, organic content, organic social, paid social, paid search, paid advertising, partnerships, distribution partnerships, media partnerships, and the entire marketing engine that you now have access to inside of cast iron, which is like, it's, it's a dream come true for me because it lets us connect, make more moments of joy between mm -hmm. that incredible product and the moment when you get to enjoy it. So yeah. I'm really excited for it. It was been part of our plan to get here. Um, now that we've got the infrastructure, the, the learnings about what people are making and buying and selling and how we can help them do even more of that. Right. Because that's one of those big hats, right? There's the operational, the back end, how do I fulfill orders, charge orders, all of that stuff. Um, obviously, the maker, the the business owner needs to be in charge of how they get better at making the product and more effective and efficient. Um, but you have the the website and the tools to support them. But then, you know, then it's the other big hat that we always hear people complain about or you know that is challenging a really challenging nut to crack is how do i i gotta get more people in right yeah. like i i want to just make my product but i have to go out and get the people right and it's the chicken or the egg and like you said people spend a lot of time and not everybody's loves social media not everybody's most people aren't you know, great marketers. And yeah. Can and figure and out it, ads and all it's not naturally. And sometimes you don't want to ask your friends and like, um, it's intensely personal. And, um, and, and frankly, there's some things that are just easier when you have a network effect yeah. behind it. Mm -hmm. So we can spend money and we will to drive att attraction and attention around, you know, the, all the products in the marketplace, but we're going to leverage special moments on the calendar because we know people buy cookies for Easter. People are buying, you know, we know the moments of the yeah. year and the buying behavior. Yeah. And every single time a day passes where someone is looking for something special for a special event and they don't know about the sellers at Cast Iron, that's a that's a huge missed opportunity. So that's what I think about. I think about, I've been obsessed with, I mentioned the millions of people in the world who are making food and selling it out of their homes or commercial kitchens, selling it legally. Um, and then the billions of people whose days would be happier if they had a cookie or their lives would be healthier if they had a meal plan and a meal prep or yes. their, their dinner would be a little spicier because they're using a, 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 an amazing sauce. Like that to me is just like the coolest thing in the world to, to, to work on. So as an entrepreneur myself, you have to be excited about it. Yeah, it's so, so exciting. It really is. I mean, I'm in doing the background work of really helping people become better business owners and understand their business models and doing it safely and all of those things. But I love that you're going to take this one thing that's not most people's forte <laughs> yeah. and, yeah, and it's, it's get that off their plate so they can just yeah. do the thing that they're really good at. 
And I remember, you know, I've always been really into local, local food. Um, I used to work for a farm. Uh, we did a big CSA program, community yep. supported agriculture. So we were <laughs> delivering the sides of beef and the bread and the vegetables and the eggs and all of that. And I feel like, um, yeah, so I've always had a special tie to local food and the way that when we as communities really support that, how our whole community thrives, right? There's like, yeah. um, there was a graphic that showed, you know, when you buy direct from a farmer or the maker or the grower that, um, I mean, it was like 70% of the income stays in your local mm -hmm. community versus when you buy that same product at a grocery store shelf, right? That it was like 30 cents or something stays in the in the local economy. So um, before Bitly, for my last job, last company, I spent years working in local media, local advertising, local commerce, local sales, and the company that that was the first one we built and sold. And there, I mean, the business, that then we were working in building for the businesses on Main Street, karate bagels and nails, the that we used to talk about and um <laughs> because those businesses are god it's so hard to run the, and build those businesses and like in in local communities the pressure you're competing with like the behemoths yeah and like they're not looking out for you and you're right and so that that my dad was a small business owner um my mom and dad had business they were small business owners and i saw how hard they worked and instilled in me both the the desire to do my own entrepreneurial stuff but also try to make it easier for others to do as well right like level level the playing field a little bit yeah and my hope you know i've always been very little idealistic and passionate and aspirational about i really do hope we get to a place i mean it's awesome we can get blueberries in the middle of the winter or whatever but mm -hmm. like but also to to create more of a focus. And I think COVID was a really great moment where it's like, oh, eggs are out at the grocery store, but I could get them from a local farm. And oh my gosh, they're so much better, right? Much and then better. hopefully you, you kind of stay in that mindset and realizing the impact that you get to have on your local community. And those, that's what the work that the makers are doing, right? They are part of that local system and, and economy yeah. and helping it thrive. Um, but you're going out and helping them find the customers, which I'll is help them the find the customer. Part. Like we'll, we'll do that. And also because I'm idealistic too, is like, it's better for the planet. It's better for our children. It's better for the future. If we can have more people be successful, yes. right. And keep it local. Like the, like, there's, uh, I'm, uh, I dream of being Bruce Springsteen, not being Bruce Springsteen, but playing in his band, um, standing next to him, having a meaningful conversation with him, like hanging out. Like that's, <laughs> that's love it. Life. but he said something, um, to the effect of in the end, nobody wins unless everybody wins. Um, he said that at a concert once. And that's something I've always remembered. It's like, what good is it if you're, I don't know, Elon Musk and you're a trillionaire, but your employees are sleeping on the floor and, you know your cars are running off the road. That's whatever. Like, but like, <laughs> you know, like how, like the ultimate measure of success for cast iron won't be revenue or if we IPO or get sold for a ton of money, whatever it is, right. It's going to be like the moments of joy that we create facilitated because we didn't create them. We facilitated them and the successful businesses and entrepreneurs who are paying for their health care staying home with their kids, able to go on vacation, able to take care of a loved one, able like, like, and do that with predictability and sanity. So yeah. that's where, sorry, like our technology, but your expertise, we'll get the customers, you know, we'll go get their customers, but we got to help them be smarter and get there faster. Yeah. And feel worthy of the profit because, you know, kind of going back to some of that mindset stuff is like, you can have the infrastructure, you can be bringing in the customers and then, but if they're not feeling like they deserve this or who am I, or I'm no, 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 like this isn't worth the $8 or whatever, right. That ultimately then 
they they can sabotage their their business. They end up running in the red. Like they're not making yeah. smart business decisions. And I really believe like if we can get everybody feeling worthy of that profit and charging what they need to and the customer feels great about it. It's amazing when, you know, I run a farmer's market and I, I'll i pay extra for those eggs. I'll pay extra for that bread. I'm looking at the maker and saying, you did this. Well, you are talking about the emotional motivations. We have the data to prove that it's true. Millions of dollars of transactions. And I know what a cookie costs, uh, by and large on cast iron, a custom iced you know, royal icing sugar cookie that that it looks gorgeous. I know what that costs versus buying an Oreo on the shelf and it's 10X on the cookie than it is on the Oreo. Like, and people are happy to pay it. They are. So, I'm happy to pay are. it. I know other people are. And all, yeah, all boats float and we all rise and let's get more money into the people's, into the people's hands that need it, deserve it, are doing the work and bringing the joy. And the marketing we're going to be doing is going to be around supporting that price point, those higher price points yep. um, that not to price people out, the opposite, right? To be some of that back. Maybe I hadn't thought about it this way till this conversation, but to be a bit of the backbone for that mindset that, you know, we're, I, I, we're putting together a campaign right now for an upcoming holiday. Um, since I don't know when this will air, but like sort of an upcoming holiday and we're giving suggested price points based on what we've seen in the past. And they're going to be higher than some people are selling already, but we have data to prove that they'll pay it. Yeah. I mean, I get into people's financials all the time and work with them in food business success on their profitability. And we have certain target ranges where I suggest you need to be at. And bakers are especially notorious for undercharging when they actually do their cost of goods sold correctly. And then I show them over time, like, you're, you know, is it really worth the time that you're devoting to this? If you're like, yeah, I'm making a profit. But when you really look at the numbers, you're like, yeah, you made like a hundred bucks this month, right? Like that doesn't feel great. And so let's design a business model that that works. And I love that you're going to go after people and tell a story about the impact of buying local and creating these magic moments. And all there's so many wonderful stories to be told. It's a marketer's dream. Oh, yeah. The creative is gorgeous. The stories are gorgeous. The products are delicious. Yeah. So when this airs, I will have supported you guys in a big event where you're, you announced all of this. Um, and I look forward to we're going to be doing some more partnerships and supporting people specifically in cast iron with the work and the expertise that I bring in, which is going to be so yeah, fun. We're, we're really lucky to have you as a partner. And um, I've said this offline, but I'll say it for your readers to hear. You are a superstar that is known throughout the industry and folks are really, really lucky to get time with you. So I feel lucky to get time with you and to benefit from your experience and expertise. So I love it. Thank you. Yeah, we're both in it for the same reasons. Let's go help people make money and do what they love and spread joy. <laughs> Amen, sister. Let's do it. I know I'm going to have a special link for people in the show notes of how to get started if they want to go and sell uh, on Cast Iron and get started on the platform. And then because you don't have to take advantage, right? Like it's kind of two different products where you can do the Cast Iron website. So going going forward. Um, we're a marketplace business. You still get the amazing cast iron website that you've always wanted you to do in with all the tools. You're getting everything you got before. You're just getting it in effectively a crowded shopping mall. Yeah. I so love it. With more customers going around you, but it's one product. It's cast iron. Okay. Amazing. I love that model. So just get inside and start selling mm -hmm. on cast iron and be part of the yeah, let somebody else go bring in all those customers. <laughs> you go make your product. Yeah, that's, yes, complain to me. Yes, <laughs> I'll be your marketer. I love it. All right, anything you want to add, Mark? I think that cookies make everything better. Fresh baked bread makes everything better. Um, we all need meal, pre meal prep. We all need a little spicier food. And I eat granola every day. I'm going off your what's on your counter behind you. But like, <laughs> it's all true. It's all really true. So um, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thanks for the opportunity to partner. And I'm really excited about what we have in front of us. Amazing.
All right. Thanks for being here, Mark. I really appreciate it. It's fun. Thanks for having me. Postscript here. I now have already done the event for Cast Iron for their Flower Power event, and it was incredible. They put on such a great event. They brought in myself and I did a really great talk, if I do say so myself, about being a better boss to yourself and being the boss you deserve. People were like, this is like therapy (laughs) in the chat. Like I cried a little. It was so good. And then they had a couple of other guest speakers that were phenomenal. And I love that they are trying to support the whole person, not just like, here's this website software, good luck, right? They really want people to succeed. And they made the announcement about the marketplace and all of that. So if you want somebody to go and do the marketing lift for you, and it makes sense, Cast Iron is not for every business model, but it really makes sense for certain types of makers. And go check it out. The link is in the show notes. And then go and see if it's for you. Because wouldn't that be nice to just have customers coming and finding you and you didn't have to go do all the work? You could then just go and make your product and get it to them and delight them. And then you just keep going. I love it so much. All right. That's what we have for you today. Until next time, have an amazing week. The smartest thing you can do as an entrepreneur is to invest in a who to help you with the how to speed up your journey and help you skip the line. When you are ready for more support and accountability to finally get this thing done, you can work with me in two ways. Get me all to yourself with one-on-one business coaching or join Food Business Success, which includes membership inside Fuel, our community of food business founders that includes monthly live group coaching calls and so much more. It's one of my favorite places to hang out and I would love to see you there. Go to foodbizsuccess.com to start your journey towards your own food business success.